takeoff of tilt rotor rotor type aircraft supporting the Marines, such as the AV-8 Harrier jet you see on the flight deck, MB-22 tilt rotor Osprey, CH-53 Super Stallion helicopter, and as of number six, the USS America sailed out of the bay this morning. Now the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter Lightning Jets. This one right here is number eight, the Macon Island. 844 feet long, crew of 1,100 Navy, 1,400 Marines, about 60 plus aircraft. Out in front of number eight, the Macon Island, is what's known as an amphibious transport dock, LPD, the Anchorage. Just like my personal favorite here, number 18, just because I like its name, USS New Orleans. These are called amphibious transport docks, LPDs. I'll talk more about these in a minute. The very strange looking vessel on the right side, first ever of any of the Zumwalt class Navy destroyers, DDGs, the USS Zumwalt. Now this is the back end of a Zumwalt class. Further up, we're gonna see the second one of these built and you'll see the front end. Now folks, pretty unique vessel, four billion of your tax dollars right there. And there are only two in the Navy, and we got them both. Notice that very unique angular design. It's called isometric. It deflects radar, makes them appear smaller than what they actually are on radar. Generally the size of a large commercial fishing vessel. And guess what? Both of them are just like a Prius. They're a hybrid. They got four large electric Rolls-Royce generators. Not only help to propel the ship, they're used for the brand new electronic warfare system. That is the USS Zumwalt. Now, back to these strange ships with the dual cones. This is where that isometric design started, early 2000s. Deflecting radar, but also putting most of your passageways on the interior of the ship. Now, whenever I talk about any amphibious ship, such as the assault ships, the Macon Island, as well as the transport docks, the dock landing ships, they all belong to the Navy, but they have a Marine Corps mission Crew of Navy, crew of Marines with Marine Corps aircraft. Also unique about all the amphibious ships, the reason they're called amphibious is for the amphibious Marines. What they will do is they will open up the entire backside of the ship like a clamshell. When they do this, they will semi-submerge, semi-flood in the interior called the well deck. That allows for those Marines to bring hovercraft, which are landing craft air cushion, other assault craft, cross the water right up and into the ship while they're at sea. Raise it up, pump the water out, transport Marines for an amphibious beach assault. Now I missed the vessel just on the other side of 18 towards the back. is another class of amphibious ship called a dock landing ship, LSD. Crew of Navy, Marines, Marine Corps aircraft, during gate, well deck, helicopter pad, and a crane to load and unload expeditionary fighting vehicles. That is the rush war. The other vessel just behind the 18 is a Navy destroyer DDG 115, the Rafael Peralta, in honor of a local Marine Corps hero. Navy destroyers DDGs perform primarily in a peacekeeping role, escort duties for the carrier, as well as undersea and surface warfare. Guided missiles, five-inch guns, anti-aircraft guns, and an electronic weapon system called Aegis. It will seek, track, destroy up to 100 enemy targets at once. Larger dock there with the cranes on the front. That large ship is called an aviation logistics ship, Curtis. In honor of the gentleman, trained our first Navy pilot. It carries everything the Marine Corps needs to build and repair an airstrip. The Trimaran Hall. This is the Independence Class littoral ship. Littoral for littoral waters, which is intercoastal. Independence class is the second of the littoral ships built. First was the Freedom class. This one is the Gabriel Giffords in honor of the Arizona Congresswoman. In front of the Gabriel Gifford is number eight, the Champion. That is an anti-mine countermeasure ship known as a minesweeper. They go out, they sea track and destroy enemy mines. Left side of the dock, 57, the Lake Champlain guided missile cruiser CG, largest of the combat ship, performs primarily in a battle force role as well as undersea and surface warfare. All the toys, all the jobs of the Navy destroyers. Another amphibious assault ship, LAJ, LHD, number two, the Essex. Transport dock, the LPD, the Portland. Notice how the stern gate is semi open, just like you see in front of that other littoral ship fully open on the back. That is the Somerset, in honor of Somerset County, Pennsylvania. That is where Flight 93 went down on 9-11. Now, folks, as I mentioned, the Independence Class Littoral ships are the second of the littorals built. They are high-speed, 
43 plus knots, a shallow water draft of 15 feet, a quad water jet propulsion system like a large jet ski, the isometric angular design, the trimaran hull, and notice, none of the Independence class littoral ships are painted. And there's two reasons why. Number one, they're built for speed. If you paint them, it's going to slow down. Another reason they are not painted, they are built of aluminum. Now, if you can zoom right into that number two, right here on the Independence, first of the Independence class littoral, zoom right into that number two, folks. And if you can look just below that number two, very faintly, you can still make out where it says Budweiser. So if you wondered where your recyclables are going, feel good to know it could be a multi-million dollar warship. All I gotta say about that is stay thirsty, my friend. You had the Gabriel Giffords back there, number two, the Independence, number six, the Jackson, in front of that is the Tulsa, number 12, the Omaha. Now, look out behind number 12. That digital paint job, that is the USS Freedom. First ever of any littoral ship, that is the Freedom class. Now they are also high speed, shallow water, and angular design, but they have a monohull with a digital paint job. Now the whole theory behind these littoral ships, folks, is to do the job of either the Navy destroyer, the cruiser, or the anti-mine countermeasure ship with a minimal crew of about 44 to 77. So every sailor has the job of about three to four sailors. All the way to the shoreline is another anti-mine countermeasure ship. That one is the Arctic. Further back, I just missed one alongside the Jackson. That is the Scout. Another Independence class littoral ship. This one is number eight, the Montgomery. On the other side of the dock here is a guided missile cruiser, the Princeton. Another amphibious assault ship, LAJ, LHD, the Von Hummer Shad. Further down is another littoral ship of the Independence class, brand spanking new. Just commissioned on March 2nd in the beautiful city of Charleston, South Carolina, folks. There next to that hospital ship is the USS Charleston. Sailed into San Diego Bay about three weeks ago. And the hospital ship, the large white ship with the Red Crosses. United States Naval Hospital Ship Mercy. One of two in the fleet, the other is the Comfort out of Norfolk, Virginia. 1,000 hospital beds, 12 operating rooms, 40 plus ICUs, trauma center, triage, variegated x-rays, CAT scans, MRIs, dental facilities, full lab facilities. Crew of 1,100 plus, Navy, Marines, civilians, doctors, nurses, dentists, oral surgeons, site techs, lab techs, dental techs, and the list goes on. Travels throughout the world, doing humanitarian aid, earthquake, tsunami, typhoon, other carry leave, brain, medical, and dental. And get a good look at that ship. That is the second largest non-combat and ship in the fleet. And it was built right next door there at NASCO in the 80s. And the reason it is so big, folks, is they literally took two oiler ships, cut the middle out of those oilers, added a bow and a stern, and created the hospital ship Mercy. And I've got about number six, the amphibious assault ship here, the Von Humber Shad. Now, folks, where the hospital ship Mercy is sitting is Pier 1, all the way back by the Bacon Islands, Pier 13. We just traveled along Naval Base San Diego, 32nd Street. Second largest naval base in the United States, made out by Norfolk, Virginia, but we do hold one-third of the Pacific Fleet. Dates back to the 20s as a destroyer base, but as you've seen, heard, and will continue, we are much more than just destroyers. Now today, NASCO Shipyard, there on your right, still builds non-combat ships. Now this large one, just off the right side of the dock here, is the LT, in honor of a Marine Corps hero. Now this is in the final stages. This is called the forward staging base at sea. Not the one there, the one on the right. Now what this one does is it's semi-submersible as well. They'll lower it into the water. They will flood the first deck. Assault craft comes on board. Helicopters on the second deck. Raise it up and transport and do a forward assault from that ship. They also repair the fleet. 76, Navy destroyer the Higgins. 
large green and blue box is the cow pen. Now, the green and blue box is called a dry dock. 